Hi, I'm Mayor Mike Winder, and thank you for joining me here at the Old Granger High School for a special Mayor's Video Report. You know, in the old days, residents in our community used to have to go to Granite High in South Salt Lake or Cypress High over in Magna for high school, but it showed that we were really coming of age of a community when we got our very own high school in the 1950s, Granger High, and the very first 900 Lancers entered class in the fall of 1958. This photograph shows students being evacuated from the new high school after a 5.2 magnitude earthquake in Magna shook the area at 9.04 a.m. on September 5, 1962. Here we are above the West Valley area in 1954 as we see neighborhoods beginning to sprout up after World War II. The Utah and Salt Lake Canal flows in the foreground with 4400 West running north from the canal through Winter Dairy. A figure eight road of the community's first cemetery is seen toward the center left of the photograph. Valley View Memorial Park had its first interment on October 25th, 1954. This 1960 aerial photograph shows Winter Dairy in the foreground. Cars are parked outside the dairy for a customer appreciation day. The dairy and adjacent cemetery are located at 4400 West, 4100 South. A few homes dot the street, and the new water tanks of the Granger Hunter Improvement District are in view. In the upper right corner, a more developed 4100 South Street runs west to Magna and the Ochre Mountains. Here we are four years later, 1964, looking at the dairy including the cows out to pasture. Developed during World War II, the community of Kearns is seen in the upper left corner. The water tanks off 4800 West are in the upper right of the photograph, and the beautiful Ochre Mountains are visible in the background to the southwest. By 1971, as we look towards the dairy and the cemetery, we see full subdivisions beginning to appear among 4800 West and south of 4700 South. More homes are also visible along 5600 West, and in the distance, the new red and white checkered water tower rises at 6400 West and about 48 South. This November 1953 aerial photo shows the farms in Hunter before any subdivisions came to the area. Looking toward the west, the Ochre Mountains are in the distance with dry farms in the upper left and the Great Salt Lake in the upper right. The winter of 1948-49 to 49 was the coldest and snowiest in Utah's recorded history. It hit Granger and Hunter especially hard. George Winder, manager at the Winder Dairy, surveys a snowdrift that was so high cattle were getting stuck. One night a blizzard stranded all the milkmen downtown. They had to stay at a hotel and borrow milk from another dairy to service the next day's routes. The Whittier School at 5975 West on 35th South was one of many schools across the valley that was not only snowed in during January and February of 1949, but was un unable to be heated because gas supplies could not meet demand. Electricity was cut off at times because coal companies could not get their coal to Utah Power and Light for its generators. Here we see Jack Williams standing atop the snow in front of his house at 5200 West and 41st South. The road was so buried that they gave up trying to plow it. Residents of Hunter would have to park on 5600 West and hike to their homes. Cold Arctic air chilled the Salt Lake Valley to 25 degrees below zero and kept the snow around for weeks. Growth was stifled in the area as long as residents had to rely on well water for drinking and septic tanks for waste. The Granger Hunter Improvement District was created by the Salt Lake County Commission in 1950 and the community set out to build a modern water and sewer system. Here we see Granger Hunter officials turning on the first pipes on August 22, 1952. A January 1953 public vote passed 684 to 37, which authorized $260,000 in bonds to expand the culinary water system. Here the first trenches are being dug for a 31 mile expansion of the Granger Hunter Improvement District pipeline. Pictured here left to right are consulting engineer David Gardner, trustee Estelle Wright, district supervisor Clint Black, and chair of the board of trustees L.O. Larson. The Granger Hunter Improvement District provided the critical infrastructure needed for the thousands of homes that would be built in the decades ahead. At the end of 1953, there were 350 homes with water connections, and the district began adding about 250 connections a month. By 1963, there were 5,000 homes with connections. Its original headquarters was located in an office on 3146 West, 3500 South, where people would come to pay their water bill. This shot's looking east from Winter Dairy at about 4400 West, 4200 South, and this 1959 photograph shows a herd of Jersey cows in the foreground. The empty fields beyond are the future sites of Dino Drive and Falcon Street neighborhoods. The Wasatch Range is in the background with Mount Olympus on the far right. The dairy herd was removed from Granger in 1973 as the suburbs grew. 
The Granger Christian Community Church was the first Protestant church west of the Jordan River. The church held its first service on September 8, 1957 in a home it purchased at 2284 West 35th South. As the congregation grew, Reverend Warren Seckler became its full-time minister. A new building, shown here on the day of dedication services, was constructed at 2600 West, 3800 South on September 23, 1962. It was later moved to make way for the new Valley Fair Mall in Costco. The LDS population in the area was also growing. Numerous new meeting houses were constructed, including this chapel at 3270 West, 3650 South. This building was dedicated in 1957 and initially housed the Granger Ward, the Granger 8th Ward, and the Granger 11th Ward. This is how the building looked in 1962. It was torn down in 2001. On January 12, 1947, the North Jordan Stake was created for the 4,644 Mormons in the area, including the following wards. Benyon, which had 425 members, the Granger 1st with 922, Granger 2nd with 915, the Hunter Ward, which is the largest, with 1,017 members, Redwood at 540, at Taylorsville at 825. They met in the Hunter Ward House. The first stake president was John D. Hill with counselors Edwin K. Winder and Alan Barker and Reed S. Arnold as clerk. One of the first acts of the new stake presidency was to create a stake center here for the West Valley area for the North Jordan Stake. The Lighthouse Church, as locals affectionately called it, was completed on 4000 West between 41st South and 3500 South. Built at 3700 South Redwood Road in 1949, the Redwood Drive-In Theater was the second of its kind in all of Salt Lake County. And remarkably, it's still around today. The drive-in was a half million dollar investment and could accommodate 900 cars. In 1956, another drive-in theater, Valley View, opened at 4800 West 35th South. That one's no longer in operation and is the site today of the Valley View Villas, a retirement community. In January of 1958, Milton Orr and his sons opened Delton Lanes Cafe and Billiards. It was a $350,000 investment, sporting 12 bowling lanes, a snack bar, and complete facilities. Delton Lanes, located on 3600 West at 3500 South, has remained a fixture in the community ever since. Here it is on opening day. Stanley and Merle Todd opened a roller skating rink at 1700 West, 3500 South, but sold the building to Mickey McMillan for use as a dance pavilion in 1944. Their brand new S&M roller skating rink, shown here, opened at 3950 South Redwood Road. It was popular for decades with school and church groups, and is where I learned to roller skate as a preschooler. After Mickey McMillan bought the old roller skating rink in 1944, he turned it into Mickey's Dance Land, which held dances every Saturday night. A player of the violin since grade school, Mickey organized his own orchestra to provide the music at the hall. From left to right are Phyllis Barton, Burt Barton, Lloyd Martin, Wilfred Webb, Burt Owen, Laverne Dixon, and Mickey McMillan. This 1946 photo shows one of the early eating establishments in the area, a root beer stand called Redwood Gardens on the northwest corner of Redwood Road and 35th South. Started by Frank E. Rath, the stand grew to include milkshakes and sandwiches on its menu. The establishment was sold in 1939 to Thane Acord, his first of many business ventures in Granger. In July of 1952, John and Minion Roper opened the first drive-in in Granger, Roper's Arctic Circle. This one was at 2200 West on 35th South. Jack and Min's, as the locals called it, was a popular place to get a foot-long hot dog, a juicy hamburger, or a chocolate-coated ice cream cone known as a brown topper. People enjoyed this Arctic Circle until it closed in 1970, and a new Arctic Circle was built on 41st South at 4073 West. Here we see Ab and Dot Butler that opened Ab's Drive-In and Hunter at 5419 West, 35th South in 1951. The Butlers are shown above brewing their homemade root beer in a 1953 photograph. Also shown is the original restaurant in the early 1950s. The original menu included steaks, homemade pies, and the signature Fat Boy hamburgers. In 1992, the Butlers opened a second location in Kearns, but both locations were closed 11 years later and they, and they opened a larger restaurant between the two restaurants at 4591 South, 5600 West. The Butler's son Bart and his wife Elizabeth run the new Abs Drive-In today. In 1926, Ellis Harvey started the first Frost, Frost Top Root Beer stand in Springfield, Ohio. In the 1950s, dozens opened across America including one right here in the West Valley area on 3510 South, 3600 West. 
Their brown and yellow neon signs were icons of the 1950s, and the company peaked in 1958. This photograph shows West Valley's Frost Top's final day in business, August 30th, 1994. The first gas station in the area was opened by Chris and Ast in 1917 at 1989 West, 35th South. At the time, this was the only gas station between State Street and Magna. Later, more gas stations opened up, including this Conoco service station at 4000 West and 35th South, seen here in this May 1962 photo. Niall T. Mackey ran a service station at the northeast corner of Redwood Road and 35th South, shown here in 1954. As the automobile grew in popularity, so did service stations. The West Valley area had 23 service stations by 1963. Mackey, part of a longtime Granger family, was also one of the 41 men who formed the original Granger Lions Club in 1948. The North Jordan Builder Supply at 1900 West 35th South was another business venture of Thane Accords. It opened as such from 1947 to 1958 when it changed its name to Granger Builder Supply. West of this business was Todd Welding and Machine Company, later called Twamco, which was started in 1936 by brothers Fred and Edgar Todd. The Saigon Plaza is at this location today. In 1945, Paris brothers John, Chris, and Gus started a grocery business on the southeast corner of 35th South and Redwood Road, shown above in this 1947 photograph. The business expanded into the Model City Market, a large shopping center for its day that included a cafe, health studio, hardware, groceries, furniture, and automobile parts. John Paris Furniture expanded to the south of this development in 1961. Fifty years later, John Paris Furniture has grown from these humble beginnings to four locations in two states. This 1950 photograph shows George Winder, Ned Winder, Another driver, Newell Falks, Dale Peterson, Hyatt Ashby, Briggs Smith, Orm Cullum, Marv Wallace, and Richard Winder standing outside the Winder Dairy in front of the company's delivery trucks. At the end of World War II, they had 12 routes and 6 drivers, but by 1960, they had 80 routes with 40 drivers and were Utah's largest home delivery dairy and the employment center for many in the community. After 1947, Granger and Hunter each had Lions Club that worked with the JCs, Rotary Clubs, and the Chamber of Commerce to promote the area. Working with the Woodbury family, they built Granger Park in 1954, shown here being promoted in the days of 47 Parade. They held Miss Granger pageants, worked to get bus service to the area, and were early advocates for incorporation. In 1945, Jake and Irene Harmon started Harmon City Shopping Center, located at 3995 West, 35th South. The forerunner to Harmon's grocery store was the Market Spot, which they opened at 33rd South and Main Street in 1932. In 1971, the original Harmon shown in this photo caught fire and burned to the ground, but the family pressed on and built a new Harmon supermarket in its stead. In 1962, Bob Nelson opened the Shopper's Discount Store on 1500 West 35th South. What began as a 7,000 square foot store with four employees grew to a 60,000 square foot store with 140 employees in its first three and a half years. The store sold a variety of goods including groceries, furniture, and electronics as seen in this 1966 photograph. This aerial July 1970 photograph of Valley Fair Mall shows Utah's newest indoor shopping mall open for business. On the lower right corner of the photograph is 35th South. 2700 West runs directly west of the mall with a shopping center west of it where City Hall would later be built in 1990. In the upper left quadrant are the original Granger Elementary and the original Granger Community Christian Church. In the foreground, empty land would soon become the I-215 freeway. This segment of the freeway was built beginning in 1973 and completed in 1976. The image of the center court of the new mall was also taken in July 1970 when the mall opened. Pictured here is Monroe School's ninth graders from their junior high program in 1947. Monroe had junior high classes from 1910 till 1949 when Valley Junior High was built over on 3200 West. With local grade schools dissolving their junior high programs, 550 students entered Valley for its inaugural 1949-1950 school year with Claude Lemon as the first principal. Long shadows indicate it's early morning as Hillsdale Elementary School students rushed to the first day of school in August 1963. Hillsdale opened in September of 61 with the booming growth of Granger in the 1960s, it was already an enrollment of 975 in its first year. Other schools, such as Redwood Elementary and Granger Elementary, opened a few years earlier. 
This aerial photograph of the New Granger High School campus in 1958 shows a largely rural area. A future Bangadore Highway would run along the high school immediately to the west. Trees and homes mark where 4000 West, 44th West, 48th West, 5200 West, and so forth run as the scene stretches into Hunter, with 4100 South at the top of the view. This photograph was taken on the week of the new high school's November 1958 dedication. Granger High School took two years to build at a cost of over $1.6 million. Originally it had 36 classrooms and was intended to accommodate 1,000 students. Classes for the first few months were held in the unfinished and often unfurnished rooms, and the first principal was Gib Madsen. The first hospital on the west side of the Salt Lake Valley was the Valley West Hospital, built at 4160 West, 35th South. The original building cost a half million dollars and included only 40 beds and three operating rooms. It did, however, offer surgery, emergency, maternity, nursing, x-ray, laboratory, and physical therapy services. Ground was broken in September of 1962. Here we see community leaders Edwin Winder, Estelle Wright, cutting the ribbon on July 22, 1963. As our community continued to grow and the medical needs increased, the old hospital was rebuilt in 1981 and given a new name, Pioneer Valley Hospital. I'm Mayor Mike Winder and this has been a special video report taking you a little bit through the years in the photos after World War II up through the incorporation time.